listen up. Can I have somebody uh, kill the music a little bit more? Someone, uh, yeah, just kill the music completely. We got some guys doing some heavy lifts over here on the deadlift. Notice they're, uh, they're deadlifting from an elevated surface. A little bit different than a regular deadlift, but the same form, the same intensity, the same rules are going to apply to this deadlift that apply to any other style of deadlift. We got some guys over here benching some big weights as well. Um, one thing I want to communicate with you guys today is it is so important for you guys to understand that it's not about the program that you're on. It's not about steroids. It's, it might be. It's not about <laughs> some movies are, right? It's not about supplements. It's not always just about your diet. All those things can be a factor. But if you want to be a fucking savage, if you want to take control of your life and you want to become a champion, you want to kick ass in powerlifting or kick ass in life, you are going to have to surround yourself with like-minded people. And being at a place like this, Barbell Brigade, which is created by Bart Kwan over here, give him a round of applause. This is an, an incredible fucking environment to be a savage and to lift the kind of weights that you want to lift. There's no limitations here. You're allowed to use chalk. You're allowed to swear. You're allowed to scratch your balls. You're allowed to pretty much do whatever you want as long as you're not an asshole, right? Well, it's really important you guys understand that, that not only just in the weight room, don't just take these lessons that you're learning in the weight room and just apply them to just the gym. I hope your journey means more to you than just that. Take these lessons that you're learning, waking up early, eating things that you don't necessarily like, training like an animal, making yourself do cardio to be in a certain weight class, making these different sacrifices that you have to make in order to be great. You know, not going out drinking with your buddies and not dicking around and really trying to take this serious and take it to the next level. If you want to be good at something, then go ahead and put a little bit of effort into it. But that's not going to cut it for being great. If you want to be great at something, if you want to kick ass at something, if you want to become rich, it's going to take the greatest effort that you can possibly think of. I'm going to have Emilio Paez rip up a 585 pound deadlift. So get to it, buddy. Each person that's lifting is going to have a little bit di different form. Everybody's a little bit different, right? Emilio lifts with his upper back round a little bit. Come on, good strong pull now. There you go, easy. When you do things the right way, and you teach yourself to do things the right way, 585 pounds becomes extremely light. You saw how fast that moved. That almost looked effortless. Try to learn from these guys. Try to learn from these monsters. See how explosive he was on the way up during that lift. That's not just a style, that's a mindset. Got Silent Mike going with 585 pull here as well. You have to get your mind right if you want to be able to hit big weights. There you go, Mike. Mike only weighs about 200 pounds. You don't need to clap for him. <laughs> That's not that fucking heavy yet. We're still going up in weight. We'll save the clapping for later, right? Not everybody needs a fucking pat on the back all the time, right? Well, maybe, maybe I do. Maybe I need a pat on the back and a hug sometimes, right? In order to be great at this stuff, you have to ingrain it into your body. This has to become part of your lifestyle. When I was creating Super Training Gym in 2005, I was working on creating Super Training Gym, I knew that if I wanted to be good, that I was going to have to surround myself with like-minded people. I was gonna have to try to surround myself with the best people that I could possibly find. And it became part of my everyday journey. It became part of every single day of my life 
to try to figure out how to get a gym like this, Barbell Brigade, started. If you guys want to be great at this, it's going to have to be something that you think about all the time. You can have fun with it. We have a lot of fun at Super Training. We pretty much uh, talk about porn, dick jokes, poop, and drugs. I think that's kind of the main topic of conversation. We have a lot of fun with it, but you're going to have to take it very seriously as well. What do we got now? You want to hit up? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. He's got a big setup. He's getting old. He needs a bell, you know, he needs a certain style of music on and everything. Come on, Larry. Use those skinny legs, Larry. Again, watch the form and the technique. Watch him lock it in. Nice. That's not just something he's going up to the bar and doing. He's not going, oh man, I suck at deadlift. I'm the fucking deadlift. I suck at these. It's going to suck again. If that's your attitude, then you're always going to suck. You got to be more confident than that. That was a good, strong pull there by Larry. You noticed how he's forcing his knees out. He's getting his body very upright into a very solid position. He's maintaining that position throughout the entire lift. We've got a bench press going on here. We've got 405 pound on there. Nice. Notice on the way down, he was pulling his elbows in tight to his, to, to his body. It's important that you guys see these kind of guys lift when you see it and you see the intensity that they're lifting with, and you see the form and the technique that they're ingraining over and over again, you'll start to have a better understanding. You can't understand it if you're only working out with a trainer that you know, squats 315, and your goal is to squat 405. How's that guy gonna ever take you there if he hasn't seen it firsthand himself, or if you're not seeing it firsthand yourself? This is the best way to learn, is to get around other people that are lifting heavy weights, lifting big weights, pushing their bodies to the limits. I'm going to get out of the way. Emilio is somebody I lifted with at Gold's Gym in Venice uh, probably nearly 20 years ago. <laughs> Some shit like that. Yeah, I'm getting old. It's probably maybe 15, 16 years ago, something like that. I got Emilio into powerlifting, and now he's starting to hit up some big weights here. Let's go. Come on, get fired up. Let's go. Come on, pull it all the way to the top now. Get your legs in there. There you go. Stay with it. Nice. Silent Mike, silent Mike, silent Mike. No one's with me. <laughs> if you're just watching people pick up weights, you're not looking at it the right way. Make sure you're watching every single thing that, that they're doing and try to apply it to yourself. Come on, Mike. Go. Yep, nice. Two. Easy. Good job, Mike. All right, you can clap for that. <laughs> Silent Mike is somebody I, that has been working for me for a few years now. I tell people all the time that if you walk with the lame, you'll develop a limp. And that's exactly why Silent Mike is my right-hand man, because he can pull his own weight, just like he did here. Pulling, uh, what, three times his uh, own body weight for two reps, right? And then some. Who's up next? What do we got? What do we got? Some benching? Scooby. Scooby-Doo. 
Make sure that you guys uh, follow these guys on Instagram and like their posts. If you don't like their posts, they get very sad. These are sensitive, sensitive guys. I know they're big, but they're very sensitive. So make sure you like their posts. Maybe even comment, say something nice. Good job, dude, something like that. Something simple. Are you flexing on me over here? Flexing your biceps? Pose down? Come on. 455 pounds. Got the slingshot on to help him overload, protect his shoulders at the same time. Do a little commercial over here. Nice, there you go. Good clean press there. I'm sure most of you are aware now of the slingshot. It's a product I invented a couple years ago. The slingshot is something that derived out of a necessity for me. I tore my pec several times and uh, just needed a way to still be able to train and not get fucked up as much. So in order to not get hurt anymore, I started playing around with some different ideas and I came up with uh, some really bad, horrible ideas that didn't work. I came up with some more pretty bad ideas that worked even less. I came up with a few ideas that hurt me even more. And then I came up with is now known as the slingshot. Slingshot is a protective upper body device. allows you to do push-ups, bench press, dips, uh, all while protecting your shoulders and allowing you to have a little bit better form, keeping your elbows in tight to your body. Just like any other lifting apparatus, you see these guys are wearing uh, belts. The belts are going to allow you to overload. They're going to allow you to handle more weight. They're going to allow you to handle more weight, more saferest. That's a word. Uh, also, you notice these guys are using uh, uh, straps. The straps are allowing you to handle more weight because uh, your grip sometimes is a limiting factor in a deadlift. Got Larry going for 675 here. Hmm. How many reps should he do? Three? <laughs> Larry should do three reps, right? Let's get him fired up. Come on, Larry, let's go. Come on, do a couple reps. Take it for a ride. Put it over your fucking head. <laughs> Come on, Larry, get it moving now. Let's go. Again, notice the position that he gets into. This is something that has to be worked on for years and years and years. Come on, Larry. There you go, good. Yep. There you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> you broke it. Bart, what happened, man? He broke it. He broke everything. He broke the plates. Ah, damn. That's why they can't have anything nice around here. At these barbarians breaking stuff. Does anybody know uh, who said the quote, fatigue makes cowards of us all? I don't know if you guys heard me. Fatigue makes cowards of us all. Anybody know who said that quote? I wish I said that. Motherfucking Vince Lombardi said that shit. How do people not know this? The Green Bay Packers coach of the 60s who won multiple championships. Nobody knows this stuff? Come on. This is easy. <laughs> Fatigue makes cowards of us all. It doesn't just apply to football. He, I know he said that to a bunch of football players, but think about that. When you wake up tired and you were supposed to do cardio at 5 a.m., I wake up at 5 a.m. every morning to start my meals and to start my day and to start my different exercises or whatever the hell it is I have planned for that day. And the reason is, is because I want to try to get up and I want to try to beat everybody else to the punch. People that are wealthy, people that are successful, they don't wake up at 9 o'clock in the morning, 10 o'clock in the morning. If that's you, start waking up fucking earlier. Fatigue makes cowards of us all. Think about it. Think about when you're training and you're up against it and you're in the fifth rep, sixth rep, and you're supposed to go for 10 reps. Your mindset fucking changes, doesn't it? When you're fatigued and the burning is starting to settle in and the pain is starting to settle into your muscles, what does your mind do? Your mind tells you to fuck off, right? And you have to tell your mind, to, yeah, it's a battle between yourself right there. It's a conversation you have to have with yourself to go through the pain and not to make, 
not to allow fatigue to turn you into a coward. If I walked into this room right now and I said, you're a fucking coward, he'd be pissed, right? <laughs> but fatigue can turn you into a coward. Make sure that you're trained up enough. Make sure that you're covering all your bases in every area from your nutrition to your diet to, well, diet and nutrition, same fucking thing. Easy for me to say, huh? Your diet, your training, anything it is that you need to do to make yourself better, including getting around people that are better than you, including watching tons of YouTube. The internet is for more than just pornography. I take that back, that was fucking wrong. The internet is mainly for pornography, but you can also watch YouTube and you can watch guys like Dan Green and Ed Cohn and Brandon Lilly and all these big savages hit up some big weights and do things that you would only dream of. But when you watch those guys, you can learn to start to apply those things to yourself. We got a bench press going on over here, 455 pounds. Training for strength isn't easy. Everybody that does it ends up with an injury here or there. This guy's been through a few. And he keeps coming back and he keeps coming back stronger and stronger. Let's go. Easy. Nice and fast. Come on, big man. Let's go. Easy weight. Not even your opener. One, two, oh. There you go. Nice. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else want to try this? Anybody else want to come up and try a 675 deadlift? I'll, I'll let you guys do it for free. Does anybody want you want to come? Come up. <laughs> Let's uh. Oh, you heard? Okay. 5 a.m. Right? You did it at 5 a.m. Come on, Emilio. Give it everything you got. Come Put on. everything you got into that bar. Let's go. You lifted more than this before. Come on. Come on, Emilio. Got any more benching going on over here? Anybody going any heavier? Yeah. <laughs> Silent mic, any more? <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh. Things are getting risky. He's going to do a curl. Everybody back up. Silent Mike and I had the honor of training with the legendary C.T. Fletcher yesterday. C.T. Fletcher is 56 years old. Mike is, what, 26? Mike's 26. I'm 38, so you figure we would have an advantage over the old man, right? He kicked the shit out of us. The lesson that I learn whenever I get around great people is the same lesson I learn over and over and over again. These people put a great amount of time into what they're doing. These put, people put tremendous amounts of time and effort. There's a lot of money that's spent. There's a lot of sacrifice that happens for these people to be who they are. C.T. Fletcher nearly died three times. C.T. Fletcher has been through it all. He was abused as a child. And look at where he is today. C.T. Fletcher also kicked the shit out of me and Mike yesterday. We did a, a ton of tricep extensions, and I've, I haven't been this sore in years. So that's a guy who's been through it all. He's been there. He's done that. And even at 56, he still has a drive and a determination to keep doing what he's doing. Let's go, Silent Mike. Let's go, Mike. Go, Mike. Come on, Mike. I'll give it all you got now. There you go. Yeah. Easy. Yep. Nice. You know what this is called right here? It's called Real Respect Real. That's what we call it on the PowerCast anyway. Anyway, it's a long story. You don't need to listen to it.
Hopefully you guys are starting to understand the intensity that has to happen for these guys to be able to do what they're doing. Silent Mike, come over here for a minute. Mr. Silent Mike. He's posting p selfies on Instagram over there. Come on over here, Silent Mike. Silent Mike, what did your uh, basketball coach, you, Silent Mike used to play basketball. I know he's fat and out of shape nowadays. He used to hoop it up. He used to think he was going to be in the fucking NBA. Then he realized that he's like 5'3", and then he's white. The video is playing him. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. Replay. It's a replay. Don't Bre believe it. Bre breaking news, Silent Mike did 675 for two. For a double. <laughs> is that how much weight is on there? Jesus Christ, you've been working out. Yeah. Silent Mike, what did your basketball coach uh, used to say all the time? Basically, uh, not only as a player, but coaching and, and fitness, and, but especially basketball, we always talk about sacrificing for the unknown. Um, just means putting in the work, and you don't know what the result may be. You know, people do different calculations on the internet. Uh, oh, if I deadlift 500 for five, I'm at 600 pounds. You're not at 600 pounds, so you pull 600 pounds. You may never pull 600 pounds, but if you eat right, sleep right, use your hydration and your nutrition and your <laughs> diet, you're more likely to hit the goal that you want. You put in all this work, maybe decades of work in Mark's case, years of work in my case, and, and maybe we do nothing. Maybe nothing happens. Maybe you don't get that championship. Right. Think about that in terms of like basketball, right? Sacrifice the unknown. You go and dive for a ball, you might get fucking killed, right? But you might have saved the ball and your team might score. Think about that as it applies to life. Sacrificing for the unknown, doing things that you're not sure what the result may be. At the end of the tunnel, if you put your heart and your passion in it, who knows where it will lead you. Got a 455 pound bench going on over here. Come on. Only weighs about 200 pounds. Come on. Come on now. There you go. There you go. Good. Got it. Give me a throw. One thing you'll also notice with uh, some of the best lifters in the world is that, or someone who's uh, extremely talented at a particular lift, they very rarely will miss a lift. You're seeing these guys are taking calculated attempts. And as they go up and wait, there's a big crowd here, so these guys are excited, so maybe somebody might miss something today. But you notice that it's very calculated with what they're doing. That was a really good attempt there. He struggled with it a little bit but was able to lock it out. Most of these guys, most of the guys you see on the internet, most of the guys that are totaling 2,000 pounds, even though they're super strong and you see them squat 800 pounds, you might see them deadlift 800 pounds, every single time that they're training, they're always training within their means. So when you see, you're seeing somebody do these huge lifts on the internet, make sure that you're not just reaching for that and make sure you're still lifting within your own means. If that means that you have to use a certain weight to adhere to a certain form and a certain technique and a certain rep range, then that's what you're gonna to need to do to get better. What do we got on there, 725, 735? 725 pounds. Oh, yeah. Come on, Larry. Come on. Go, oh, wake up. Let's go, Larry. Come on, Larry. Come on, all the way. Let's go. He's only been powerlifting for about a year and a half, two years. 
but no matter how long you've been doing this, all kinds of weird things will happen to you in your journey. You may fall, you may miss a weight that you normally hit several times. It doesn't matter how long you've been doing it for, you're going to always have different things happen to you in your journey. Larry is somebody that's been training, he said since he was 14 years old, and he's still somebody that seeks out getting help from others. He's here at this seminar today. He told me that he's been helped by Dan Green before, uh, and Josh Bryant is helping him with some of his programming and stuff. It doesn't matter how long you've been doing this for, you're always going to need help and assistance and guidance from other people. And that's why, again, it brings me back to my point of make sure you're around like-minded people. Hey, come on. Come on, come on Larry. Come on, Larry. Let's go. Go, don't quit. Let's go. Let's go, let's go, come on. Come on. Come on, Larry. 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 Come on, Sometimes hear people talk about a max effort lift. That's kind of what a max effort lift should look like. There should be a lot of strain involved. Maybe you miss it once. Each time you see somebody go for a max effort lift, you're going to see them shake a little bit. You're going to see them turn a little reddish, maybe a little purplish. Depending on how much weight they're handling, you're going to start to turn some funky colors. 500 pounds, here we go. speed work. Sometimes you guys hear people talk about dynamic effort or speed work. I want you guys to kind of see exactly what that looks like, the amount of effort that's put into that. Just because the weights are lighter doesn't mean that you're just lollygagging and, and uh, lifting like a pussy. You're still lifting with uh, the intent of putting maximal force behind the bar. I kind of refer to it as breaking shit. You're trying to break shit. You're trying to be uh, very, very aggressive with the weight. And of course, you're trying to nail down your form. Main concerns on any sort of speed work is uh, force production and form perfection. Those are two things you need to remember. You like that? So yeah. big words, smelly? Maybe. Maybe I'm getting more smarter. So these guys are going to do some speed deadlifts. Uh, sometimes these are done for eight, eight or nine uh, singles. Uh, sometimes people use two or three repetitions as well. Uh, usually the sets are somewhere in the neighborhood of 6 to 10 and anywhere between 1 to 3 repetitions, somewhere in that neighborhood. The weights are about uh, 50 to 60 percent. Go for it, buddy. So even though it's 315, he's still going to pretend it's 700 pounds and just rip it up with everything he's got. guys when they're doing this uh, type of speed work, uh, whether it's a squat or a deadlift, they like to do it without a belt. 
because again, the weights aren't that heavy. Mike's what we like to call a switch hitter. Bounce from both sides of the plate. Ambidextrous, if you will. He likes to deadlift both sumo and conventional, uh, just to kind of basically just hit things from different angles. Both sides. Both sides. <laughs> On the front and the back. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> all right, all right, settle down, settle down. I didn't really mean to break stuff. It was kind of just like a metaphor. Is that the right word? He don't need, he don't need no belt. He don't want your belt. Paper champion. Go <laughs> ahead. Come on, Adam. One, two, up. There you go. Come on. Come on. Yep. Nice. Here you go, Adam. You guys notice how he had his spotters next to him? Those guys were following him very closely. Whenever you're trying to lift for strength, things that are safe are not that effective. <laughs> the more dangerous something is, a lot of times the stronger you'll get from it, the stronger you'll become from it. So it's important that you have people that are watching out for you. You can throw on a little bit more weight. Later quarter, doesn't matter. Whatever. Let's go play. At my gym, at Super Training Gym, uh, a lot of us will train with uh, speed work one time per week, and we'll train with a max effort lift one time per week. Again, there's a lot of different programs out there, there's a lot of different ways to train, and I think that all of them are effective, whether you're doing fives to five, or three sets of three, or you're following a Prilipin's chart, or the Shaco squat program, or there's a million different ways to go about doing this. And if you talk to anybody that's been in the game for a little while, you realize that a lot of, a lot of different things work. It's a matter of trying to find something that fits into your lifestyle, fits into what you're doing. If you work a nine to five, you're trying to do the old Bulgarian system, which requires you to live three times a day, that's, that's not gonna cut it, that's not gonna work. You're not gonna be able to make that work without probably losing your job, right? <laughs> So you have to figure out something that fits uh, your lifestyle, fits uh, your needs, maybe fits your mentality as well. Uh, for me, uh, I'm not a very detail, detailed orient, oriented person. Um, so I, I like the conjugate system because I'm allowed to do many different types of lifts. I don't have to ever adhere to one style of lift. I can do this kind of lift one week. I can do a deficit deadlift the next week. I could do a speed deadlift and I could just keep switching it up infinite amount of times until I can't think of anything new anymore. The best way to get a PR every single time you step foot in the gym is to think of something you've never done before. And so that's one thing that I like about it. It allows you to be creative, it allows you to have fun, it allows you to try new and challenging uh, different ways to make yourself stronger. Some people will, uh, they have like tracking devices that they'll put on the bar, a tendo unit or all these different types of things to try to see uh, how much force they're producing. Uh, all those things are cool, they can be effective, but another way of going about doing it is to have somebody else, have a training partner tell you whether you were slow or fast, or to have someone record it. If, so, if somebody's seen you lift for the last few years and they see you pull slow, they're going to tell, tell you that that deadlift just sucked or that it was slow, right? So you could have fancy equipment and fancy things tell you how much force you produce 
or you can simply just go off of a training partner or a coach watching it. Oh, Larry. Hey, now. <laughs> Larry, let's have you uh, set up again real quick. Well, let's have to be real quick. You take your time. So this is what a sumo deadlift looks like. And uh, each person is going to look a little different. When they do a sumo pull, Larry's got strong legs. He's got big legs. He's able to force his knees out really well. Not everybody's going to be able to do that. Some people have limitations with what they can do with their hips. Not everyone's going to be able to force their knees out that hard. But what you're trying to do is you're trying to get your knees out to about where your feet are or about where your ankles are. Kind of see how that works out? And that allows him to kind of get this real upright posture. When he gets that upright posture, then he's just going to lift the weight completely straight up and down. Larry, what are some things you're uh, thinking of when you're doing this? Um, shoulders and beard behind the bars, what Burdick told me. <laughs> you hear that, ladies? <laughs> trying to get his shoulders and his face, his fat face and his beard, back behind the barbell. And That's you'll notice some of you guys that are kind of watching from the side here, you see how flat his back gets right before he goes and the, the type of positioning that he's able to get into. <laughs> he's good at that. Yeah. And he's got kind of a, he's getting tired now. Fatigue, right? Really? <laughs> yeah. He has like kind of a rhythm down with how he's executing that lift. He's kind of throwing his head back. He's got his shoulders back and he's doing everything all at once. So for some of you watching that have never done that before, uh, that's probably pretty foreign to you and you might not be able to execute that right away. You kind of take it one step at a time. Two things to remember during any style of deadlift are that you want your hips to be lower than your shoulders. You want your hips to be lower than your shoulders and you want your back to be flat. Those are the two main things that you're trying to do. It doesn't always work out that way. Silent Mike hit up a sumo pull. So again, here's another variation of a sumo pull. Silent Mike is not quite as handsome as Larry, so his deadlift's gonna look a little bit more differentist. Again, we're trying to shove the knees out to where the feet are. We're trying to get the back flat, we're trying to get the hips lower than the shoulders. Not everyone's back is gonna be perfectly flat. Sometimes it has to do with arm length and stuff on kind of the positioning of your back. If your arms are short, your back might have to be rounded a little bit. I have Emilio set up for a uh, conventional deadlift. Hey, settle down, right? <laughs> Again, each person is going to lift a little bit differently. Emilio likes to kind of round up here, but if you look, his lower back is still flat and still stays in the same position throughout the entire lift. Some of the things he's trying to do on this lift is he's pulling the slack out of the bar. He's giving the bar a little bit of a tug so that his whole system is on lockdown. Everything's staying tight from his fingers all the way through his forearm, his biceps, all the way through the entire chain, all the way through his back, his shoulders. He's getting his back flat by kind of utilizing the barbell. If the bar wasn't there, it'd be kind of hard for him to get his back flat because he'd probably kind of fall backwards. He's trying to drive his heels through the floor. And as soon as the weight gets to your shin or even a little bit slightly below your shin, you're trying to flex your butt as hard as you can and drive your hips forward. So, stop for a second. If he tries to pull on the weight with his, with his arms bent, kind of watch what happens. He'll pull himself out of position a little bit. This is a light weight for him, so it might not actually pull him out of position, but you don't want to yank on the bar. Want me to do it wrong? <laughs> this is the wrong way to do it. And you'll see some people do this. And some people are successful. They hit some pretty big weights when they kind of yank on the bar. They don't really get themselves tight before they do a lift. And you'll sometimes see guys on the internet, the interwebs, pulling 700, 755, 800 pounds. And you're like, holy shit, that was incredible. 
But usually what happens to those guys is they're not able to stick around for a very long time. Or the other thing is that may be a style that they developed over the course of a few decades. So just kind of consider those guys on a pro level and you're probably not there quite yet. You're going to have to learn how to pull on the weight a little bit more methodically rather than just trying to rip it. You might hurt your back or throw something out of place. I just want to thank you guys for letting me uh, invite myself here to Barbell Brigade. I appreciate it. Uh, I love coming down here. This is an awesome environment. Again, take what I said to heart today about trying to get around like-minded people because you want to get better. I see a really good group here developing at Barbell Brigade, and I think that's going to do a lot of great things for these guys. Look at this guy's belly over here. Look at this. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> Showing off his tattoos. Uh, you know, I always say it. Uh, each and every seminar I ever go to, I challenge all of you, anybody that hasn't not done a powerlifting meet, please go to a powerlifting meet. P please sign up for a powerlifting meet. Put yourself on the line. Put yourself out there. Test yourself. See where your strength levels are. If, you, if you're that scared or nervous to do a powerlifting meet, go out and support them. We need more people to show up at these fucking things because they're not, they're not as popular as they need to be. Um, and lastly, but not least, you know, powerlifting is more than just exercise. It's a movement. It's a revolution that's coming, and it's gotten more and more popular over the last couple months, and it will continue to grow if you continue to spread the word uh, about what a fucking awesome sport this is. Strength is never a weakness, and that's it for me. Thank you.